Hello everybody, my name is Rick and I'm part of the Critical Security Controls version 8 editorial panel and I've worked on previous control panels for years. This is the 12th in my video series doing a deep dive into the updates to each of the new controls. I have links to my videos for controls 1 through 11 in the description below as well as a link to the CIS Critical Security Controls page to download your own copy to follow along at home. Today we're talking about control number 12, Network Infrastructure Management. Network infrastructure management is a new control this year, made up of safeguards from version 7 controls number 9, 11, 12, 14, and 15. <laughs> um, get there of those. We talked about last week that uh, control 9 was removed, but we also removed control 12, 12, boundary defense from version 7. It's another one that retired since it's, you know, it's known that infrastructures have no real boundaries these days. This control is about protections and detections of network gear and security appliances, not specifically computing assets. We focus on updating default settings for these devices. And, and while we don't go into security architecture, we do have safeguards around documenting the architecture, device configurations, auditing, control lists and policies, and secure network management. So let's look at the controls. There are eight safeguards in control number 12. I will put uh, version eight over here and I'll pop up the other ones over here as we, as we go. Remember we renamed uh, some controls in version seven to safeguards and we reorder the safeguards to align with the implementation groups. So starting with 12.1, Ensure network infrastructure is up to date. This was pulled from 11.4, install the latest stable versions. And this is just a foundational safeguard to make sure that you keep your assets current. And this is the only implementation group one safeguard. 12.2. Establish and maintain a secure network architecture. This is the roll-up of control number 12.1, maintain inventory of network boundaries, and control 14.1, segment network based on sensitivity, and, and actually 14.6, protect information through access control list, and, and 15.1, maintain inventory of authorized wireless access point, and 15.10, create separate wireless networks for personal and untrusted devices. And 12.3, securely manage network infrastructure. This is basically from 11.5, manage network in, uh, devices using MFA and encrypted sessions. 12.4, establish and maintain architecture diagram. This is a new control, but it kind of goes with 12.2, uh, but really is about creating and keeping current documentation and diagrams of the infrastructure. In 12.5, centralized network authentication, authorization, and accounting, AAA. Uh, this is another new control. This is an implementation two and three control. So anyone who has network, multiple network devices would want to centralize access and logging instead of having to do it individually. In 12.6, use of secure network management and communications protocols kind of goes with again 12.3, but includes network items for includes items for network management and wireless network management. In 12.7, ensure remote devices utilize VPN and are connected to an enterprise authentication authorization accounting infrastructure. This is somewhat from 12.12, .12, uh, manage all devices remotely, logging into internal network, and 14.4, encrypt all sensitive information in transit. 12.8, establish and maintain a dedicated computing resources for all network, uh, all administrative work. This is really a combination of 11.6, use dedicated workstation for administration tasks, and 11.7, use dedicated network. We got rid of the dedicated workstation requirement because it's often challenging, especially in the case of remote work. You know, we've been doing it during COVID, and, and the idea is, is the same, just to have a jump box to get into a console to the devices or, or an access admin or administrative interfaces. So now that I know the changes, let me get all those down, get it, take a deeper dive and highlight some of these eight safeguards. And so let me put the, the, the details here. 12.1, uh, ensure network infrastructure is up to date. We mean having the latest stable version of the software or the latest that's compatible with your environment. This is the only implementation group one safeguards and we recommend reviewing this monthly. 12.2, establish and maintain a secure network architecture. We specify segmentation, the concept of lead privilege and architecting for availability. Reliability is an important concept uh, that we've been discussing recently in the industry, and it's not just about being stable, but about being resilient to different types of attacks. In 12.3, securely manage network infrastructure. This refers to version and patch management and using secure protocols like SSH or TLS for administration. In 12.4, establish and maintain architecture diagrams. This is pretty straightforward. We recommend updating it annually or whenever there's a significant infrastructure update. And 12.5, centralized network authentication, authorization, and accounting. Um, this is about having centralized manage, managed credentials, not having unique accounts for every device, which would only be possible if you had, say, like one router, one firewall, and one switch, though it might all be in one appliance nowadays. 
and 12.6, use of secure network management and communications protocols, specifically refers to um, 802.1x and WPA2 enterprise or better. Um, this is related to 12.3, but as you see, it applies to Wi-Fi. In 12.7, ensure remote devices use VPN um, or are connected to an enterprise AAA authentic, uh, infrastructure. This is a general statement to use a VPN for access to corporate environment would not necessarily apply to software as a service or other cloud applications, but it could. Um, there's a lot of application level firewalls or trusted connection approaches you can do for a more distributed environment. In 12.8, establish and maintain a dedicated computing resource for all administrative work. We mentioned that this could be physical or logical, uh, segmented from the primary network, ideally out of band, um, and not connected to the internet other than maybe through a VPN. So, so a test would be like you shouldn't be able to bring up a browser in this administrative console and be able to hit websites you know, from one of these jump boxes. So now let's get that down and bring up page one. Let's look up the narrative and the upfront material for, for control number 12. The overview we took mostly from the retired control number nine ports and protocols, but we start with establish, implement, and actively manage, you know, in order to prevent attacks from exploiting vulnerabilities in network services. And in control nine, we specifically said ongoing operational use of ports, protocols, and services on network devices to minimize windows of vulnerability. It's just we kind of got rid of that wording about ports and protocols because it's larger than that. And the why this report, why this uh, control is critical, we start with the discussion on the importance of secure network infrastructure and security architecture. And we highlight that the, the scope includes physical and virtual systems, gateways, firewalls, routers, switches, etc. Um, network-based devices. Uh, we call out that many weaknesses are due to insecure default settings and discuss how devices are configured initially for ease of deployment, not security. We list items like default accounts and passwords, support for older vulnerable protocols, and presence of unneeded software that might have vulnerabilities that you know, should be changed or removed. We discuss the reality that network security is an ever-changing environment, so regular evaluation is needed to look at traffic flows, access controls, and configurations. And we close this section by talking about how network device configurations are often becoming less secure over time, as they may not be updated for fear of stability or organizational exceptions like access control lists or firewall rules. In the, we'll move that down, bring up, in procedures and tools, we talk about the importance of documenting the architecture and keeping diagrams up to date. We talk about keeping device patches current and upgrading end of life components before they go out of support or developing a mitigation strategy for isolating them. We talk about account management and access control auditing and, and all that administration should use multi-factor or privileged access management for specifically from specific trusted locations. And we touch on the need for reviewing and logging and monitoring procedures. Uh, we also discussed the presence of commercial tools to evaluate firewall and access control rule set and how these should be run after any major network or firewall rule changes. And finally, we have a link to the CIS guide for small office telework for small office networktivity and connectivity and security and provide additional guidance for implementation group one organization. So, so that wraps up control 12. Hopefully this was helpful to you going over the changes from version seven to version eight. If you haven't already, please go download the controls yourself from uh, cissecurity.org. And if you have any questions or comments, sign up to the controls workbench also in cissecurity.org where you can post questions and perhaps even contribute to the next version. So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and feel free to leave me a comment if you have any other questions. Have a great day. Hello everybody, as you know I have no pets to share, but I have some interesting figures. This particular one, as you see, the body is made from an old toilet float, and the head is a meat tenderizing hammer, and the arms are actually from clarinet um, keys. So this was a pretty interesting one. Have a great day.